So you have layered up your painting based on reference. We did a sketch. We checked that sketch against our composited reference just to see if we were in the right ballpark. And then we built up this shape painting on top of it. And we alternate between kind of a gray background and a white background. We're really trying to get rid of that, that empty space, make decisions about all of it. So the only kind of big empty space I see is here. I want to define that and then we'll see what's next for the painting. And at screen resolution, speed paintings can look pretty good. It's why there's so many online tutorials of them and kind of time lapse YouTubes that are really impressive because by just having a lot of enthusiasm and attacking it, you can build up an image pretty quickly just looking at shapes and edges. But we want to create a digital painting here, or at least be aware of digital painting as something that we could print, something that's beyond just a small screen image. And so we'll zoom in on this and then see how we can bring it to a better and more satisfying finish. So this is my speed painting. There's basically only one layer of painting. There's a, a layer of sketching and then a layer of painting over that. That's what I call shape painting, or think of it as speed painting. You're trying to block it in all very quickly. So once that's done, you save it. And then you lock it like we have. And you make a new layer on top, and we're going to call this refined painting. And on my refined paint layer, this is where I might use my navigator to zoom in a little bit. And you'll see when you zoom in, this is like what you would see when you print it. It feels digital in a way that from a distance it doesn't, even with my custom brushes. And it basically looks like it was all made with one sponge. So how can we deal with this and maybe make it a little bit more interesting? Well, refined painting, I'll, I'll show you a way we can do it. There's a, a few different ways, but we want to focus in on something up close and see if we can kind of model it into a finish that we want. So if I zoom in on the nose, which is right in the center of my painting, that's what I have so far. But if I zoom in on my photo reference of my nose, there's a lot more shape and highlight to it. Same with the mouth. So I go back to my reference. Remember, you have to upload your photo reference and your finished painting. So I'm going to open my reference in Photoshop, even though I already have it copied there. And now I'm going to go to my window and my workspace. And where it says Arrange, Come on. Still have enough computer screen using this projector. Well, I can do it this way. Let's see. I'm on Essentials Default. Do I want to arrange it so it's too upstacked? I get more space. Let's see. But basically, you can see here, I have the image, and then I have it up close here. So if I can't get it to be next to each other on the screen, which I could, I'm just 
to work with this projector in the classroom. The resolution isn't set up right. So let me close that. This is the other option you have, is you can actually view it just in preview. So in a way that's separate, so you can just zoom in on a certain area and have that open and visible to you, even if it's at a low resolution. So I'm going to have this open in preview over here. Then I'm going to work on my painting, and I might even move this out so it's free floating. So however you can make it work on your digital space. And so now, because I'm just using the brush, just the brush tool, I'm going to zoom in. I'm on my refined paint layer. And I'm going to try to work on this area, make it look a little bit more like and instead of stealing colors, I can't steal them from preview. I can steal them from myself. And I'm going to make my brush a little less opaque. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. But I'm still going to use the same custom brush with all those different brush strokes. And I can be pretty confident because I'm on a different layer. With the help, you can kind of use dark shades first. That lower opacity and it goes to 50 percent, the colors will change a little bit more. It's more work, but it's more control. I always notice they have this kind of bluish tint. But I wanted to find the first thing out to make sure it works. And the highlight, and then put a pearl. Always holding down option to see the new color. I don't want to stay on one exact color too long. There are ways in Photoshop, like there's the mixer brush tool, where you can set it so it picks the color from underneath. And it can blend it. And there's all kinds of fancy things. But I just want you to become familiar with just basic brush, basic features.
and you can always use your command plus and command minus. And the more detail you want, just the more time you have to spend layering it up. And you're figuring out your level of finish. Based on your own ambitions. Actually, I don't want that high a level of finish for this. Because I know it's due next class. And I'm just trying to master these skills. I'm excited to get on to my final project. So that's why I have levels of finish here that if I zoom in on, I can see this is kind of what I'm going for. So the mouth might, might actually almost be where I want it. But now when I zoom in, you know, at least with the nose, that feels fully considered. Take my opacity up a little bit. Turn off my guides so I don't accidentally draw more of them. You can use spacebar and the, to get to the hand tool to kind of navigate yourself around. This is how it goes. I'm gonna mix some of that blue into the fur, especially underneath the nose. Get some of these shadows into the mouth. And I get to do some of the teeth. Little snaggle -tooth, tooth dog. And I actually find it helpful when doing a digital painting not to have a super high resolution reference. Because I just want to be paying attention to the, the shapes that matter to create the image which edges matter, like the tongue, shadows underneath it, kind of colors. That's what makes a painting. I'm still using a pretty big brush. Okay, what about the highlights on the lips? So little black lips. Huh, what did I just do? <laughs> All right. Always good to save your work. So this is a refined paint layer. with the tongue underneath his, or on top of his uh, lower teeth. Okay. 